Welcome to Random Talk. I'm Jim Arnold, your host and the collectaholic. You can go to my website at realart, R-E-E-L-A-R-T dot net. And uh, I collect real and replica movie props and have a whole line of ancient mysteries, comic books, uh, and much, much more. Oh, beer bottles. Oh, beer bottle. Beer, you know, I was the largest beer can collector in the world when I was in eighth grade. I just had three major uh, gold mine finds, as they used to call them. And as an adult, I still trade uh, beer cans a little bit on the Internet. I used to do the, uh, you know, James Bond used to have a set of uh, beer cans. They had seven cans uh, for 007. And National uh, Brewing Company put those out, and they were shut down like in a couple of months because of copyright infringement. And uh, so as an adult, I could never get the cans when I was a kid, but because I was a big fan of James Bond, uh, it was always something I wish I had in my collection, but I didn't in my collection of over 8,000 cans. Uh, but as an adult, I, I started collecting James Bond movie memorabilia, and I started buying the cans which they cost about 500 bucks a piece, I may add, and then reselling them for six, 700 bucks a piece, and you make $100 here and there. And I actually got to uh, collect the cans as I got older. You know, at big news in the news today, my uh, from the James Bond movie, The World is Not Enough. Did you see that movie? Who was in that? Uh, Pierce, Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. Okay. Yeah, yeah I saw. Uh, it. By the way, I should introduce my cohort here in crime, uh, Doctor Paul Cox. Yeah, we kind of jumped. He into is this, the didn't doctor, we? the evil doctor. He's got his uh, tools, right? That you do torture with. I try to help people. Okay. Well, anyway, from the uh, uh, the world is not enough. I sold my uh, Russian life saving ring. Uh, last night to a gentleman out in Montana. Um, I've actually had that for 15 years. So sorry to see it go, but the uh, problem was I had to get an extension ladder to get it down from up on the, uh, in my family room. And uh, But I was sorry to see it go because that was one of my... Well, you'll fav- just make another one. uh funny funny that you should say this uh uh you know i've been collecting uh, i'm a collectaholic i'm i i i'm it's like some people have to go to aa and some people go to this drug thing i'm a collectaholic so uh, we have a 12-step plan of getting out of this thing but the i've been collecting historical documents now and I've gotten a couple of interesting things, and I ran across a uh, site about these authenticators. And there's a guy, uh, John Resnick, and well, I, th- I ran across this because I, uh, when I bid on some of this stuff, like I was bidding on Mary Surratt's hair. She was the first woman to be uh, executed in the United States, and she was. Uh, um, part of the Lincoln uh, assassination. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I figure, well, I, I wonder if this hair has ever been sold before. So I ran a search on it, and I found out it was. A few years ago, somebody had bought it in an auction, and they were reselling it. So then I continued to search, and I found out, and I found this guy's name, John Resnick, and he's one of the largest... Uh, authenticators in the United States. And then I heard there's some bad stuff on there. And, uh, but typically this is a, he's, he's the guy you see on Pawn Stars. If you ever watch that show Pawn Stars and they call this guy in to look at the, uh, autographs. Yep. He's the guy that comes in with the like black shirt on. Oh, okay. And, uh, of course, he looks at it with a magnifying glass, but he's already looked at it uh, more closer than that. But uh, I started looking into this guy a little bit, and it's him and another guy that are putting uh, 
this uh, some of this stuff on this. Mary Surratt hair. He's got the largest hair collection in the world. And so that's where this hair comes from. But a lot of the other documents in this auction that I'm bidding on are also coming from uh, this guy. And, of course, when uh, there's always people that are a little distraught because they, they got something and maybe this guy looked at it and said that it was false, that he's got a forgery. And I ran across a thing where in St. Pete here, I guess there's an older gentleman and he donated his baseball, autographed baseball collection uh, for the, in St. Pete and they built like a museum downtown. Yeah. Right in downtown St. Pete, there's a museum and it's uh, uh, an autographed baseball collection. And uh, now he, I guess he's got it. They got it on loan, I guess. He didn't give them the, the baseballs, but it's on loan and it's a museum. So uh, Reginald Roundtree and the group, you know, I guess just for the hell of it, they had this often, this John Resnick guy came in and out of 20 baseballs, 13 of them were fake, <laughs> the autographs. And then they had this other guy uh, f from New York, and he said to ba basically the same thing. And uh, it just kind of, it, it, there definitely, there was a time like on eBay and stuff where there's a lot of this stuff that is fake that you buy. I, that's why I don't usually deal in autographs with movie celebrities or anything because of that. But it did bring up the guy that I had always... I watched a show one time, and it was about uh, this guy. And he was making documents for the Mormon church. And he was sell all of a sudden, he found this document from, from, that was written by John Smith. And it was called the Salamander Letter. And it puts into threat their whole beliefs as a Mormon church and his belief and everything. And he sold this letter for uh, $6 million to the Church of the Latter-day Saints. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, he found more. He had a source to buy this stuff. So he was donating the stuff, but he had to buy this stuff from somebody. Well, it ended up they, they busted the guy. What ended up happening is, is that they ended up, he had a couple of people working with him. And he ended up murdering them, and he was building bombs, and he ended up dying in an explosion. And when they found him, his house in the basement, he had paper uh, baking and growing algae on it and all kinds of stuff and uh, that had to do with that. But uh, it's really kind of interesting, this, uh, this type of stuff. But... Uh, and, you know, that whole kind of uh, forgery type stuff. You know, Michelangelo started as a forger. Not many people know that. Hey, don't talk about Michelangelo. He's my buddy. <laughs> Michelangelo. Hey, Tony, Tony. I see here that uh, Harvard uh, has just gotten, they released, uh, they, they got a book that was made out of uh, human skin. And they just did some testing on it to prove it. You can see the pores in it and everything. They didn't say if it was Caucasian skin or Latino or wherever the book came from. You know, what kind of skin was it? It doesn't matter. It's human. <laughs> human. Okay. Well, on a lighter note, Paul, what are you, uh, what's, what's up with you? Hey, let's talk about marijuana. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about it, man. Well, I, the marijuana. I hear, I hear uh, Cedric's barking. Uh, that was Cedric coughing. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got a cold today. He's got a horse cough. Yeah. Well, there's a new type of uh, marijuana product out. It's getting ready to be mass produced. Is that the kind with the snakes in the bottle? No, this one's uh, marijuana coffee. Oh, marijuana. I Didn't I say that they'd start... Uh, having drinks like fat frappuccinos yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you did, and and that's exactly what they have. It's an alert, creative high, the wake and bake drink, and it's coming out in the state of Washington. They already have it up there, and 
It's a caffeinated buzz is what it is. Well, we'll have to try some of that. You know, I was, uh, I told you. I, I so was, if you see that on the internet, Jimmy, let's, yeah, let's, uh, let's download or, order it, me right? a bag of that, will you? The, we'll uh, check that out. Uh, I told you I was out on the beach this weekend. This buddy of mine was in from Seattle. And yes. I, I completely forgot where he was from. And, but the guy has completely got into this, uh, I guess out in Seattle, they're into this craft beer yes. type thing. And, and he said they don't even drink Budweiser. It's unheard of for a bar to have Budweiser or Bush or anything like that in there. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're just, uh, he's, I, I opened his mini bar and he's got craft beer in there. And I'm like, he's just too, too far into this. And then he starts talking about right outside and each front of each of these uh, craft bars, they got like tables and stuff where you can smoke pot. And then they have uh, little things to buy this stuff. And I'm like, you know, I completely forgot about where he's coming from. He's coming from Seattle. Yeah. And this thing's legal there now. He says, oh, yeah. He said there's people uh, with pipes walking around inside the bar. It was like, you know, they look like Sherlock Holmes walking around with these pipes and stuff. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. That's a little bit. It, it really takes the fun out of it, you know? Remember the day back when we were teenagers and, uh, you know, this does, I mean, it's like they got grandpa's pipe now and they're smoking pot out of it. It, it just uh, doesn't seem right. They should have a water pipe or something. That ain't right. Or one of those gla uh, colored glass thing. Yeah. What are they? What are they called? Bongs. Or like a water pipe or something like that. Yeah, well, they know. need something. I, I mean, this is it's getting too common. It'll be here in Florida shortly. The uh, yeah, I see uh, here in Florida, more closer to home. Uh, two brothers got a fight over uh, with a pot plant. They must have thought they were. Uh, were they fighting over the pot, or did just this one of a, them get this was mad at the other one? one. And uh, well, that's where they grow it all. I think that one brother got mad at the other one. They started pushing each other, and next thing you know, the guy's pulling it out of the ground and hitting him over the head with a plant. Yeah. Yeah, this this friend of mine was down here. These people up in Seattle just don't, uh, they're, they're thinking different, I guess. Uh, he was telling me they had a naked bike ride up there that they do once a year, and they uh, all these guys get on a bike. They got to eat thousand participants in this thing and it's for you know what it's for is uh an alternative to driving cars so they all get together and they're naked they got shoes on and that's about it helmets they all wear helmets they don't want to get any <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're riding naked and it's pretty mountainous out there but they don't want to get any you know they don't want their head to get hurt but but they're naked you know so if they fall in the Around, they can get road ash on any other part of their body but uh you know they don't want to harm the head or anything mm -hmm. or stub their toe and they ride naked for i think uh 15 20 miles or something what's the point of riding naked though the it pr promotes bike riding as an alternative to driving cars uh and, and, and there was a there was pregnant they had a pregnant woman uh women group that rode together that has to be like a guinness world book of records uh, there Eight well you know you're people. right you're right that at the uh, a, a marching band and dancers kicked off the start of the event and then later at the end there was a naked punk band that jammed from the sidelines as uh the bikers rolled past. So at the end, they had a big party afterwards with a naked punk rock band, you know, playing. It has to. It must. You know, have once the the guy do. hurt his uh, hurt his penis on the guitar, got stuck in between the strings. That brings up another point, and I think it has something to do with the weather because there's this guy up in Toronto that's <clears throat> holding a cucumber in one hand and his own cucumber in the other hand <laughs> well where was he doing this at at the grocery no, store at the library oh at the library so he runs off 
And this just happened in April. And then uh, later, and just a couple weeks ago, he shows up again, and he's got another cucumber with him. Now, is he trying to pick up women, or what's his deal? No, I don't, I don't know what his deal was. I think it was self-satisfaction or something, oh. but um, self-gratification. Um, but uh, somebody saw him, and they called the police because they knew what he was going to do. He's going to poke around somewhere? Yeah, it's like uh, that other article I saw somewhere. I'll tell you, some of these guys are really uh, out there. They're really strange. There's, well, there was a guy like running they, here's around. A, here's a guy. Uh, uh, this guy's in Florida. This is uh, at the fairgrounds of Volusia County. Uh, and his penis is mistaken for a bag of vegetables. And this, this, oh, here's the guy, and he's rub. He he goes up to this woman, and he starts rubbing up and line, uh, rubbing up against her with this bag, Ziploc bag, with his penis sticking out of his pants, and uh, finally somebody behind him stopped him, and they held him down until the law enforcement came and got him. What is with people, man? That guy is a real weirdo. Well, that's weird people in the news, you know? I mean, that's what makes the world go around. Right. I, what else have you got? Oh, I got... Uh, now, here's a guy, you know, uh, another... Well, here's a kid, a California teen, Mohanad Alawed. He stole credit cards, and he rented $240,000 on a car. This is a Sonoma County in uh, California. He was jailed. He was arrested of uh, using a stolen credit cards to rent a 240,000 sports car, which was a McLaren, and a $12 million vacation home. Now, I'm a little, uh, you know, first of all, the, the coupe was reported stolen by its owner, but he, he also painted paid twenty seven thousand dollars to rent a state in Glen Ellen. Now if they you saw a kid that was nineteen, would you rent him a two hundred and forty thousand dollar car if he came into your car dealership? Of course this is California, so I mean Justin Bieber's out there. And so are a lot of the Maharajas out there. So right. you know uh, you do get some Well pretty... they've charged this kid with four felonies and credit card fraud and it, in march before this he was uh charged with he was trying to buy 14 iphones and yeah. two laptops so he's done it day. before and right. he's back out on the street right they and never let these guys out oh, it's it's pathetic these you know? inmates the only inmates they just you know obama let, let out sixty five thousand inmates or out on the street you know, because he said uh, we can't afford to keep them inside and wants to let them out, or easy crimes, or I don't know. But here, now, now, Rick Scott, now I know you don't like the guy. They just talked about now they want inmates are going to begin walking do uh, walking uh, shelter dogs in Florida. Oh, I heard he was going to have them uh, working oh, as bank pick, guards, you know. Picking, picking yeah. up, uh, they they... The officials, or I guess this is county commissioners. It's not the governor. Uh, they they figured they needed a somebody to walk the dogs and do the pooper scoopers. So now that they have these, instead of doing a chain gang or making license plates, some of these inmates could be going and using a pooper scooper and walking the dogs because uh, the officials have been wrestling with ways to make sure the dogs are sufficiently walked. They got so many of these things in the SPCA and animal control that they just don't know what to do because there's not enough uh, volunteers. So uh, I guess the idea was to use criminals that are, and they, sh you know, these criminals should be doing stuff out there rather than, uh, but you know, here's what you, they, they do that. They get paid for that. Look, nonviolent criminals should not even be locked up. We should just be taking part of their money. Violent and malicious people should be locked up. 
because they harm society. The other. So people, you're with letting these guys out of uh, if, jail if it's nonviolent. Well, what do you consider nonviolent? Nonviolent means somebody dope doesn't hit you. Or? No, dope dealer should be out on the street. That's a businessman. So if you get arrested for selling a pound of dope, you shouldn't. Arre- they shouldn't arrest these guys. It depends on what type of dope. Well, uh, let's say crack cocaine. Crack cocaine. Well, I think that is a pretty harsh drug. So, yeah, I think they should be locked up. That's that's a harsh drug. Okay, let's say you robbed a gas or you robbed a gas station. Well, what, well, well, what happened? Robbed robbery. That's a malicious crime. Yeah, but let's say, hey. I stole something from the grocery store, and they locked me up. Well, I don't think they're locking up shoplifters. Yeah, they lock shoplifters no, up. They, uh, no, unless they you're the quarterback for FSU. No, they don't lock up shoplifters. Are you kidding me? They take them away in a police car, hang out at Walmart. You'll see them come every day. No, nah, they're... they're uh, uh, what do they do, fine them? They try to fine you because then the court cost comes into the system. But the they're interested mainly in uh, uh, murderers, robbers. Uh, if you use a gun, uh, anything that gets big press, you know they'll, so. they'll prosecute. And drugs, big drugs. Uh, if you got a small drug like uh, uh, you got caught smoking in your car or something, with, smoking a joint, they they're interested in the money. They're, That's it's what like I'm drinking saying. and driving. That's what I'm it's saying. It's like drinking and driving. They're not arresting you and putting you in, in in jail. They want you to go through the system and pay your five. No, they grand. do arrest you when you're drunk. Right, but after you go through the court system, it costs you like about five grand to get through this thing. Right, and uh, they want the money. They don't want to lock you up. They don't have room to lock you up. It's it's limited. So. The and there is a seventy percent of all people in jail have been in jail before. Well, we need the money because the government waste is absolutely off the well, charts. I agree. That's why they need to get rid of the government. Uh, uh, talking about that, um, not get rid of the government. Just get rid of some. It government's increased its size by a third while this administration's been in office. You know, you brought this up a, a, a few weeks ago about the U.S. Department of Agriculture gave the University of New Hampshire seven hundred thousand dollars of taxpayers' money to study methane gas emissions from the cows, well, from this, dairy cows. This all has to do with. Uh, uh, the what is it the culture or whatever uh, climate change because uh, dairy cl- uh, uh, cows are our biggest source uh, affecting climate change they they uh, affect it more than the United States so if you can't convince the dairy cows of changing the climate what good is it for us to do it I don't know they thought maybe if we put peanuts in their feed, that may just do it enough. That's what the, uh, how much did they spend on that? $700,000. I, I, I wish I was part of that. I could make some suggestions. How about some organic popcorn or how something? How about this one? The U.S. Census Bureau got a commercial on the Super Bowl day, and it cost $2.5 million for that commercial. And it wasn't. It wasn't even a really well produced. I don't, piece. I don't know what is it that uh, why any government office. Uh, I don't care what office it is. Why is any government office advertising on any station in any format, whether it's the census or the uh, your local city? That you know, we got a new park downtown, or I mean, they got they're running on taxpayer dollars for Christ's sake. Now the census, why do they need to advertise that we got a census coming out there? You know what? If I want to go out and do my census, I'll go do my census. If I don't know what a census is, and 
They say 80% of the people out there don't even know what a census is. Most people don't even know who president is. They can't tell you who the president is. Uh, it's not the government's job to go take a $1 million ad out to, to remind you to go fill out your census. 2.5 million. Oh, 2.5 million. And, uh, and you know I what see was those wrong? ads all the time for, for whatever, like the post office advertises. Now, the post office lo- lost $4.3 billion in the first quarter. And I see ads on TV all the time about, you know, do your fl- uh, priority mail, we're helping you and all that. You know what? Maybe they need to save some of that money and apply it towards their bottom line. Well, here's a good one for you. The National Institute of Health, NIH, was given $800,000 in stimulus funds to study the impact of genital washing program on men in South Africa. Now, what are we worried about men washing their genitals in South Africa for? Because they come over here, they come over here with STDs, and and it spreads, you know, fast like wildfire. Man, they hit the pavement, and it's like, boom! It spreads like wildfire. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I just, you know, the approval rating for Congress is at an all time low. I I can't take it. I I just, it, it's like that that movie network. Was it network that? I've had it up to here, and I can't take it anymore. Yeah, that's right. But uh, That was not work. I, I just feel we're, like, on the verge of collapse here. I, 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 we, You know, it does feel like that. It's, uh, you know, it, it's just like one thing after another comes out of the uh, government. It's like, you know, when's this going to stop? Now we got to uh, we, we get a deserter. We have bring them back, and we give five guys away for this. Okay, then that's in the news all over the place. And then now I heard yesterday that they're planning on letting all these guys go in Guantanamo Bay. They're just going to let them all loose. Uh, Because this war, I guess we're coming to an end of this war. So they're just going to let them all loose like World War II. We just let all the prisoners loose and everything. And uh, the... It's just like one thing after another. And, you know, <laughs> hey, let, let me ask you this. Because the, the, uh, they were talking about, I guess, in Hillary Clinton's book that she put out, she said they were broke when they entered the White House, and then when they left the White House, they were broke. They didn't have a dime yeah. to their name. Yeah, I heard that. You believe that? Well, they're kind of contesting mm-hmm. that because... The president uh, makes five hundred grand a year. Plus, no expenses because everything's cooked for him. And he tr- his travels are all paid for. And so do you believe that? I, I, it's hard to believe. But what Hillary says is that they, were, they paid millions and millions of dollars for attorneys because Bill was having some little screw-ups, you know? Yeah, he, he, he probably still does. No, now they're they're making like two hundred grand per talking, and they they talk two or three times a day, so they they make close to a million a day. That's for each person. So you got two of them, so they could probably make a million and a half in a. She an was afternoon. a little disappointed because Chelsea only gets ten thousand a day. Yeah, so. I'm, that's too bad. But hey, I've got another thing here that you won't believe: U.S. Department. Of Veterans Affairs spent a hundred and seventy-five million. That's a hundred and seventy-five million during 2010 to maintain hundreds of buildings that it doesn't even use. That is like that's uh, our government. It includes. I think uh, somebody said the uh, the uh, the Congress and everybody they were like at a twenty-seven percent approval rating. Yeah, I don't think anybody has a lot of faith in it. You know, I think it's measured on, you know, if you're doing good and you're happy in your job, then you don't really care about the government. And everything's going for good for you, they, I, they're doing all right, I guess. But when it's hurting, 
and we were talking on the way down here about people can't afford groceries and uh they have to eat at mcdonald's and places like that because that's they can get their dollar fifty meal and feed their family exactly i uh, understand it. Uh, you know it's tough out there for these people that's when they start saying our government is i mean they're blowing money on uh, uh you know the sex lives of a fruit fly and stuff like that and uh i don't know well let's add about they're saying that the there's a 13 percent approval rating of americans for congress now 13 percent is all I that, thought I just said it was 27%. Well, I have 13%. Oh, is that what it says on there? Yeah, 13%. Oh, wow. It's dropped since But 27, I, 13, who cares? It's, no, it's I at just, an all-time I, low. Uh, I thought I, uh, I'm way off on my uh, thing. No, I'm sorry to dispute you, but. That's okay, man. That's, I'm uh, only. That's okay. It's only what I read, you know. It's only the stuff we get you know, off the, the internet. People are getting the people are getting more frustrated. They do more drinking. That's what they do. They do more drinking. Now, man, uh, here he's been he he was arrested after he, last Sunday after he started calling nine one one because his wife kept throwing his beer out, and he uh, Carlos Bueno of Palm Beach. He was arrested. He called 911 uh, eight times. And he said, my wife keeps throwing my beer out. And he was arrested on uh, misuse of 911 uh, s- system. And the I guess his wife, they, they got into a altercation there at the house. And uh, the wife kept throwing his beer out he said he's had it with the system he's had it with the economy he can't make a living and all he wants to do is sit home and drink his beer and, and cry and the wife said she's sick of it she's sick of him drinking beer she wants to find something else to drink well to the rescue uh you never know when you're going to find something in a waka key dumpster in hawaii last week somebody tucked four bottles of wine containing dead cobras geckos and seahorses into this uh, public library dumpster a custodian found them under uh stacks of old business routes bus routes what's he doing looking in the garbage can i don't know the bottles of the dead reptiles were labeled as snake wine, a real specialty of Vietnam. And it looked like some had been opened and sampled before they were thrown away. Now, people drink this to combat hair loss and fertility. Uh, and the instructions on the bottle said to take twice daily, a small cup before meal for rheumatism, lobago, and Sweat of limbs. What is sweat of limbs? It means when your arms or hands sweat, something like that. It's a century-old tradition to d- drink this concoction, usually a, a rice wine in China, Southeast Asia. In Vietnam, it's known as runu, thuru, or medicine wine. And there's hundreds of varieties available, many which use dead, sometimes endangered animals. Um I, I, you know, we were looking for one with a celio camp from Madagascar. Uh, as for Hawaii, this is what I found in it. As for Hawaii, possessing a living snake is a Class C fennel, fennel, uh, felony there. So you can't even possess a snake there. If you do, it's a felony. Uh, although these snakes were dead... The Customs and Border Protection further prohibits any trading in any species present on uh, international trade, and this includes cobras. Uh, nobody knows why this was there. Uh, nobody knows why it was tossed there, but our hunch is it has to do with the disgusting hangover. Well, I hope so. But I, I, it's kind of weird that they can't have snakes there. Yeah, I agree with them, though. Jim, if, I was just in Hawaii few months ago and i can tell you if look what happened to the lionfish here in florida they're all over the gulf now and 
all year long we have these tournaments. Go out and kill as many lionfish as you can, and we will pay you. And they'll pay you lots of money, like $100 a pop for these lionfish. Hawaii is so tropical and and so evolutional. It's it's like the Galapagos I- Islands, you know? Galapagos? Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. And uh, it, it, I can see them not allowing people to bring in snakes and all kinds of different lizards and love bugs and stuff like Why, that. Why, because it'll kill some of these other things? Yeah, well, it, it, it's 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 not natural to to their habitat. You know, Hawaii is a it's a volcanic island that popped up, and it's grown lush vegetation, and and some of those birds and tropical birds and stuff floated there and flew there and everything else. But you've got to control it. I I, I do believe that. And uh, look what's happening with the pythons here. Didn't. Yeah, yeah, they drop them in the Everglades, and they grow wild down there. I was showing a patient the other day. I was trying to get ready for the show. There was a python that had a deer. (laughs) That had eaten a deer. They cut the python open, and it had a whole deer inside of it. I mean, that's so you know it could eat a human. That's what the the article was. Have you ever seen a picture where they eat, like, rats or something? And you see a uh, like a snake, and you know they don't look they're they're not that big. And then like in the middle of it, you see this big rat in the middle of it. <laughs> That's what that python probably looks like a dog or, or a deer. Man, a deer's a big animal. That is a it was huge. And then the top layer of the deer <laughs> has been <laughs> degraded to where it looks like it's a medically preserved. Animal you know, I saw the top layer. Of I skin. went up there and I said, "Wow, how did you get that in there?" And it said, "You know, the toenail is the best part." Yeah, <laughs> probably what ripped open the snake. But hey. uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's. Hey, go here's on. A, you know, it, I got speaking of that. Uh, here's some uh, weird gift ideas for Father's Day because Father's Day is coming up. Uh, you can get him a python that eats deer. That's the number one uh, gift on the list. What know. about a pound of uh, marijuana coffee? A pound of marijuana coffee. Yeah. Uh, how you about, can either drink it or smoke it. Whatever. How about there was a, let's see, I found a good one, a donkey piss uh, tequila. <laughs> I wouldn't trust Fav- it if it was coming out of Mexico. Favorite with uh, dads all over the Sun Coast, right? <laughs> Which, <laughs> is that what your son's getting you? My son's going to mean nothing. Donkey, donkey, piss. I don't uh, want tequila. anything. I don't need anything. Uh, I saw this. It immediately got my attention because uh, I'm, uh, I got, you know, I wear yarmulke wherever I go. Uh, the I Grow Laser Helmet. Looks like a hockey helmet that I wore as a kid, painted silver, and it's got laser uh, things that hit your head to try to regenerate your hair. Uh, but this is like 700 bucks. Now, I had this this next thing. I had this idea the other night because we were out and we were talking about some cans. You know, when you go someplace where to carry your cans, it's a six-pack beer belt. So what you do is you wear this belt, and you can carry a six-pack on it. And you can even get the, uh, you know, where uh, the buckle monogram. Now, this one, I actually have a friend that has one of these. It's a fit band. And it, it like goes around your waist to like suck in your beer belly. Yeah. And uh, but that a lot of the they sell these things. Uh, what do they call them? Uh, uh, a friend of ours wears this now to kind of uh, make his stomach uh, suck in, uh, sham or shem or something like that is what they call. Them. The next thing's a giant rapella uh, fishing lure. It's about eight or. Uh, Six feet tall. Oh yeah, those are cool. I've seen them. They're, it's, yeah, it's if, you're just a, a, if you're a fisherman, yeah, you know it's a cool. They thing. They don't use it for fishing. It's just a model. The to... why? If you weren't a fisherman, what would you want it for? It's it look. It's very colorful. It's great for your bar, but if you don't it's... like the fish, what would you want it in your bar for? Jim, why would you say that? I, I've I've seen your bar. All the stuff that you have on around your bar, it. 
we could talk about that for a week on this show. <laughs> and you're making a big deal out of a Rapella uh, fishing lure? Well, it's a six foot lure. Yeah. It's just it's, a model. It's 400 bucks. It's just a model. It's just a model. And so many people liked it, they wanted one. And then, you know what? They put it in their tent that looks like a 1965 Volkswagen. Uh, and then that that Rapella thing's inside. So they go inside, walk around. It's like a funeral thing. And then uh, you get sunglasses that you can use as beer openers. That, this is the one I, I don't get. My Little Pony boxer shorts, and it's got like rainbow dash theme on it. I guess that's for the game. Yeah, yeah, I got some of those. Yeah, I and figure yeah. Kitty I too. figure you're yeah. wearing those. Yeah. Uh the putter cup. Uh that's for golf people. Wow. Uh, and you get What's a that? a knit <laughs> that's uh basically it's just a cup that's got a uh putter on it as a handle. The uh, knit gladiator helmet which is a like a pullover helmet that looks like a gladiator, a TNA pole dancer, drink stirrer, and skull glass. You know what I got, Jerry? Oh, that excited you. Our friend, uh, our friend Jerry, for Christmas last year, a pole dancer. No, with, I uh, got him. I got him the 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 potty putter. Oh, the squatty potty. No, it wasn't the squatty potty. It was a potty putter where you set. You sit on the toilet and you practice putting while you're going to the bathroom. Oh, really? Yeah, you get a little putter and a ball. So what? And while you're sitting on the bathroom, you're practicing putting. putting. Yeah, yeah. To so use it? I I don't know. I'm gonna ask him if he's ever used it. Here was and this here was something cool. This is a bacon wallet. Now it looks like uh, the actual bacon. Remember we uh, like a bacon package from the grocery store? Yeah. And you open it up, and there's another bacon package on the in, inside. Now, if you're a golfer, this actually was pretty cool. Well, I'm a movie buff. This Darth Driver. Now, these were uh, covers for your woods right. that look like Darth Vader. And okay. then they had the Stormtrooper helmets for your irons. That would be cool. I like that. That would be cool. I actually like that one. Uh, of course, I don't. I don't play golf that much, but... Then here's a real roaster, which is a, it's like a fishing pole with a, you put a, a marshmallow on it and cook it. Yeah. Did and you then, hear that, Evan? Uh, you can get me one of those for Father's Day. And man crate zombie kit. So this man crate has a machete and all kinds of goodies in there. And here's, here's one that was kind of funny. You, you plug in your uh, iPhone. And it's got a megaphone. <laughs> so you can talk uh, through this megaphone. So it's using your uh, iPhone as a megaphone. And you can talk, uh, you can talk through that thing. The, uh, uh, some good gifts uh, for the day. Now, the, uh, I, I had mentioned, I think, either last week or the week before, about Bigfoot was going to be unveiling itself with Barnum and Bailey up in New York. Well, they finally unveiled Bigfoot up in New York. They did. Yeah, yeah. And it turned into being just a huge toe job. The guy was wearing a they had a they had like a one person tent and then like you paid five bucks and you go in to see Bigfoot and he all he was was he was dressed up in a foot costume with his face sticking out and he looked like Santa Claus. You know, he had a big long beard and it had five toes on top. So it was a big foot. Oh, he couldn't fool you, could he? Uh, well, I didn't go up there. And, of course, it was the biggest foot on Earth. Of course, it's in Guinness Book of World Records now. And it was a very big, big foot. And I did. T we talked about that uh, human skin book, which uh, I would actually love to see that thing in person. You know I'm attracted to that kind hey, of thing. Hey, did stuff. you go see Body Works when it was here? No. Where was it? I think it was over at um, 
wasn't it over at the um um uh, you know what i did see uh what's that place that's over there ruth eckert hall no it's over by usf what's that place that's, mosey mosey, mosey. Yeah, it was that mosey Oh, yeah. Oh, my daughter wanted to go see that. I did. I went to see it because, you know, I was just. Well, you're you know, a doctor, man. I was curious to you see to how, know how, they, the blood how well they did everything. And I think that every school kid should go and see how the body is constructed. It was really well, they, incredible. They were going to, and they tried to get a grant to, to get every school. The problem was is that that. that didn't have anything that pertained to the FCAT test. No, they had. <laughs> they gave the last eight hundred thousand to the VA to remodel the monkey house that nobody's used you in mean twenty Jim years. Farm? No, not that one. It's, it's in it's in Ohio. They have an octagonal pink house that used to have monkeys in it, and they got like. Well, they got $175 million, which included remodeling this building that was that was there to house monkeys. Now, what does monkeys have to do with the VA? I, I, I don't understand. This is a, we are in so much trouble. The, the, you know, China is getting ready to bond them out. We're not going to have anybody to borrow money from anymore. Well, they can borrow from you. They can borrow from you. Not me. Yeah. Not me. I ain't got any. Yeah, you let the president drive your Ferrari, won't you? Uh no. No, I had to I had to they foreclosed on my Ferrari. I couldn't yeah. afford it anymore after retirement set in. Hey, what's the word of the day? I'm gonna ask you this. Do you remember what the word last week was? No, I don't charlatan yeah charlatan right. okay the word of the day today is ambrosia oh i love ambrosia what is it ambrosia is this good looking girl that i used to know when i was in high school that's her name ambrosia really it's like that song uh sarissa brande she's a fine girl she's a fine girl what a good girl she would be it's the food of the Greek and Roman gods. It's the ointment or perfume of the gods. It's something extremely pleasing to Paul. <laughs> it's a fruit concoction that's got coconut stuff in it. That's, that's the company my... drew criticism for advertising the children's medicine as ambrosia. Ambrosia. My it grandmother came made from it. A Greek. My grandmother made it for Thanksgiving. It's a f a fruit cocktail that's got. Yeah, coconut it, had, in. it had oyster chips in it. Coconut. The uh, you know this day in history on 1752, Benjamin Franklin flies his kite during a thunderstorm, and uh, it doesn't mention in the kite having a key on it. But I know in the, uh, the cartoons it always has yeah yeah. Key but it's it. a he he collects a charge in a laden jar. Now, you laden is kind of a metal type jar, and uh, that's what leads him. He was he, at up to that point, he had no interest in electricity. Now, this date in 1692. Let's see if I can guess it. 1692, we sailed the ocean blue. This has to be about Vasco da Gama. No, but I do know who Vasco da Vasco da Gama was the first person. Uh, Spanish explorer that circumferenced Africa okay. and to India. Okay. See, I'm pretty smart on that yeah, stuff. That's good. First, the guy that circumferenced the world was Magellan. Um, and they all worked for that same company there off of Portugal. Uh, but this day in 7, 1692, first, that was the first Salem witch hanging. Now, do you know what the, everybody thinks, you know, there's a new show on called Salem, and a friend of mine told me, you've got to watch it because you'd love it. And I watched a couple episodes, but 
I don't know yeah, accurate. Everybody thinks this is like witch trials and these people were concocting all these kind of medicines and everything. These witch trials were either because the people of the period were either Puritans or pilgrims and they were really strict in their religion. Uh, anybody that was practicing a different type of belief of religion was considered a witch and it was heretical. Uh, when the Catholics first uh, started their church, anybody like the Calvinist and all that, anybody that started that type of thing was considered a uh, heretic. Heretic. They weren't in the in the institute or what is the Spanish Inquisition? Yeah. They they would uh, kill these people and call them a heretic. Even the people that we consider Protestants today. Back in the day, like the Marcionist and the Gnostics and these types of people that really, they believe, they're Christians in all sense of the word. They were considered heretics because they weren't Roman Catholic Christians. And this girl, this first killing, the girl was, she sounded like she's mentally ill and she had uh, like, uh, you know, I have epilepsy, but she sounds like she was having seizures on our, some people have epilepsy they have a hundred seizures a day she sounds like she was sick and the doctor diagnosed her as being a uh, uh there's two girls and they he diagnosed them as being uh under witchcraft and then they hung them or they burned them actually at the oh, stake so sad. actually they hung they did hang them but see how uh uh, this is kind of misplaced, the, you, these witches. They really weren't practicing witchcraft. Didn't they do that to Joan of Arc? Joan of Arc, they burned her for that, too. She was he, she died at the age of 17. 17. But, see, she became a hero later on in the church. But it was the church that burned her. So, uh, now, this day in 1935, Alcoholics Anonymous was founded. Oh. And now there's over 80,000 local groups just in the United States. Now, I don't know if this is this a worldwide organization. I don't know. It's about 12 steps from here. Now, in 1940, Italy declared war on France and Great Britain. Now, interestingly enough, uh, they withheld their formal allegiance with either side and they were kind of sitting back was it italy yeah they were they were kind of holding back before they declared war they declared war on these after the germany went into france so the german uh, after german occupation of paris so hitler says first they were too cowardly to take part now they're in a hurry so that they can uh, share in the spoils, and that's what Hitler said after well, they... what happened was they refused to order meat pizzas. They all wanted cheese pizzas, and the you know Nazis got all upset about it and said, "No, we're not ordering meat pizzas. We want cheese pizzas." Did you know that? No, I didn't know okay. that. I didn't know that. Do you know that Italy wasn't even uh, called Italy uh, until after World War One? The uh, it was still part of the Roman Empire. You, I know the name of it. What was it? Domino's. There you go. Okay, we got a couple of sayings of the day. That's and there was one right there. Where was pizza invented? Naples. Naples, Cedric. Where do you think pizza was invented at? Uh, and who invented? And who who invented it? Michelangelo. Doctor Paul Cox. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> pizza was invented in Chicago. Oh, get out of here! At Gino's, Gino's Pizza invented pizza, and then it was Ray's they had in two, New York. Oh, New York is crap. Ray's Everybody says this New York crap. It's Geno's that invented it, folks. No, and no. Duo's was number two up in Chicago. And that it's deep dish. That skinny crap that you guys roll up like a Tootsie Roll up in uh, New York sucks. 
but they didn't have any over in Italy. If you, you go over there and they don't really have any. Where pizza. did they invent spaghetti? Well, spaghetti may have come up from over there. I think it came from China. I well, you know, I think uh, if you read that book by uh, uh, what's that guy's name that went to China. Marco Polo. Uh, Marco Polo. I think he said he did get it from China. Now that you mention it, and but you know they another side story. They they don't know if Marco Polo ever existed, and nobody's been able to prove that he ever existed. They found this uh, book could be a fictional story, uh, in its oldest copy, which is kind of interesting. Got a couple of sayings of the day. If you think. You can, and if you can't, you're right. The eye of a human being is a microscope, which makes the world seem bigger than it really is. In the land of the skunks, he who has half a nose is king. That's by Chris Farley, who's not with us anymore. The most beautiful thing in the world is, of course, the world itself. I agree with that. Here, this is a good one by Shelly Winters. Whenever you want to marry someone, go have lunch with their ex-wife. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Illusion is the first of all pleasures by Voltaire. And then by Napoleon, water, air, and cleanliness are the chief articles in my pharmacy. Please and, get uh, me out of here, Cedric. What? Here. You weren't enjoying that? <laughs> He's he's having a hard time. He's having a hard time. The only thing else that was left is one of the speaking of churches, they uh, uh, a local church here exiled a couple because they backed their uh, they they exiled a couple from the church because the couple backed their daughter who was a lesbian. So be careful what church you go to and what the kind doctor. Of church was it? It was a uh, Christian church. Oh. It was a, a Protestant church here. Most of the churches in the U.S. are Protestant. Oh, but they, they, the daughter's a it's lesbian, so they now. backed uh, the daughter in her sexual beliefs. And the, the church said, you're out of here. So, yeah. All right. That's We're our show. Here. That's yeah. our show for the day. Jeez. You going to do the send-off? I'll do the send-off today. Hey, this is Random Talk. I'm Dr. Paul Cox, along with my friend and buddy, Jimmy Arnold. We'll see you next Tuesday. And uh, keep those calls coming in at 441-3000. See you next week. A.M. Clearwater, Tampa Bay. WDCF Dade City, Tampa Bay. WZHR Zephyr Hills, Tampa Bay. Listen.